Hello the there, neighborinos. So today's video is all about an earnings call that Take Two Interactive just had with their investors a couple days ago. So in their Q and A section after their their long winded speech, they ended up clearing the air about quite a few different things. So first, some of you may possibly have been warning about whether or not Red Dead Online is possible to go free to play. Well, guess what? It's a possibility that that just might be the case. They didn't say specifically whether it would or wouldn't, but rather that they would go where the customers are. And if that meant separating Red Dead Online from Red Dead Redemption 2 as a $60 purchase, then they would do just that if the consumers really wanted it or really needed it. But then that would also depend on their market structure. Because one of the other things they touched on was that digital sales grew this last year by more than 30%. So in-game spending grew by more than 30%, meaning that all of those optional transactions that you make in-game, those made up quite a large portion of their revenue. So it's, it's a real possibility that Red Dead may get separate, or Red Dead Online may get separated from Red Dead Redemption. Another thing they ended up touching on was that one of the things that I have that I have talked about on this channel previously are the upcoming consoles, the Scarlet series of Xbox and the PlayStation 5. One of the things that they specifically mentioned in that question and answer section was whether or not those upcoming consoles would disrupt the development process for any of them and the clear clear cut answer is no this one is not expected to be disruptive in really any fashion however depending on what happens with the google stadia that is a possibility However, as with separating Red Dead Online from Red Dead Redemption 2, that would more depend on what the consumers want and how that would reflect the return on investment, not only for Take Two, but also for the consumers. As a subscription model may not be necessarily what the consumers want, just because of their interactivity with those products. And one of the big issues that were cited in this paper were that most, most people on average are going to burn through about 45 hours of content per month. So for a gamer, that could equate to one or one, maybe two games over the course of a month. I, I don't know how how fast you go through a game, but depending on the length of a game, yeah, 45 hours may not be enough. I know it took me a little bit longer than that to actually get everything I wanted out of God of War. Another, one of the next big things that we may need to actually touch on a little bit more in depth is the fact that they as an interactive software development company not only saw increased digital sales year over year but they are expecting that number to grow even more that said the splitting of it of the production line for the PlayStation 5 may actually be necessary Xbox 
already has that idea in motion. They've they've already got that set up to split the Scarlet Line into Anaconda and Lockhart, so that they are getting not only a streaming service system but also a disk-based service, right? A disk optimal drive service system. Um, the next, one, one of the other big things, there, there were like 14 things, and it, it's really hard to keep them all in order, even though I put them all in order, because that, anyway, so they do have a current, a few current projects in the works, including the Outer Worlds, which is expected to come out this year. However, one of the other things that they mentioned in here was that there are other unannounced other unannounced projects that, that are in fact in the works that have yet to be released. There's no announcement made about them yet, and they are not the annual seasonal projects that they put out every year like NBA or WWE. They are strictly unannounced set to be released later this year. Fiscal year 2020 for them. Just started in April. Uh, one of the... So, one of the other things that they gave us was that although, although there may be news ban about banning loot boxes not only here in the United States, but around the world, they, on the, on the larger scale, don't really care because they only make up about 3% of the company's sales. Um, so that means that all your in-game spending that is, of course, optional, well, you don't really worry about it as much because it's not... A lottery or a random based system it's strictly you you buy this thing to upgrade your horse or to upgrade your hideout or, or whatever it is you do online I, I, I don't know I don't use those you know hmm. um, so and on the event that you did actually like the way Grand Theft Auto Online rolled out, then you are in luck because they plan on using that same model with Red Dead Online. And on that note, even if they, even while Red Dead is going to be coming out of beta soon, they do still have projects in the works to add to Grand Theft Auto Online. So, if you're focusing on one rather than the other, then don't worry, you'll still be included. That being said, um, I know the one of the biggest things that they have going on for them right now are Red Dead Online and GTA Online, but be, one of the bigger things that we can keep an eye out for is the fact that the Outer Worlds is expected to do better than those. Well, maybe not Red Dead Online, but it, it's at least going to do better than WWE. And I think I've been rambling on long enough. I'll give you this list in the same order that, that I was able to get it down, as well as the link to the the link to the article in the description down below so you guys can learn all about this and read the 15 page article for yourself if you guys liked all all this rambling let me know if you hated it let me know and as always don't forget to tell me how i'm a horrible person for giving you all this news ta-ta for now